mentioned as my three words, models of nature that work. And that's what physics is about. Uh, we, uh, I haven't heard much yet in these discussions. Observation. You know, the, the old Greeks thought that by closing your eyes and by staring at the ceiling, you could figure out how nature works. They never got very far in this respect. So by just contemplating the navel, you're not going to figure out how things work. The, to do Except it, maybe your navel. You might, even that you might be. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, a good goal of a well, as it was everything we see, the quantum mechanics is part of, of the real world as we know it. That it's a given fact that what we understand of nature uh, is extremely well described by the thing we call quantum mechanics. So well that even it's difficult to convey the message to our friends that maybe it's not exact. So that uh, many physicists will refuse to even, uh, even contemplate that possibility. But um, the, the most uh, the significant thing that happened in, in the past century is the discovery of, of lots of things about nature. And we can summarize that in terms of a, a word that we use now a lot is called the standard model. The standard model is a model that describes everything we know about in the world with extreme accuracy. It's not just accidental, not just saying that there is water, air, and fire or something like that. That's much too vague. Now we know that there are elementary particles. There's a handful, perhaps two hands full of elementary particles. There is just one hand full of different kinds of forces by which these particles interact. And yes, there is quantum mechanics, more precisely quantum field theory, which is a combination of quantum mechanics and special relativity. All that together describes this particle. And the amazing thing that happened in the last century, just during the end, last years or so, the final step of the last century, that um, the model became extremely accurate. So there must be a lot of truth in it. At the same time, while the standard model was developed, at the same time, it was also understood that it conveys a lot of those truths, but definitely not everything. We know there are weak spots in it. Nobody denies that. So nobody is saying that this is the whole truth, far from it. But it captures a, a, a remarkable big part of the truth. And this we should never underestimate. This is the way how physics makes progress. And standard model did not come about by naval staring or whatever, but by combining theoretical analysis with a lot of experiments. On hindsight, one might say that some of the experiments might not have been necessary. We should have used uh, advanced intelligence to deny things instead of experiments. You can say that on hindsight, but while the model was developed, we know very, very well that lots and lots of, 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 of points were reached where no progress could be made unless people made observations. So experiment is an extremely essential uh, tool in physics. Without experiment, you, you never figure out how these things work. Well, with perfect hindsight, we didn't even have to drive it at all. We could have just looked back and like written it down, and then we would have been OK. Well, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> might think per, as a perfect hindsight. Are, I mean, many people made a mistake. I mean, in, in, Greeks made basically a mistake in thinking that by sitting in the bath and having you yourself float up, that's not to find how the how laws of nature work. Einstein made the same mistake. Einstein also at some point later in his life said, I don't need any experiments. They're just, they just confuse me, they took me off, off my, my real work, which is by, by, by thinking very deeply I can figure out how the world works. But you also know that Einstein was extremely successful in early in his life when he did look at experiments, but later in his life when he thought he was infinitely smart, he didn't succeed in, in making any real progress anymore. In fact, he made many mistakes. So, um, so the lesson here is you have to look at how the world works. And then, from the experiments, quantum mechanics, you have to remember, came from experimental observations, not from uh, if, if, uh, logicians who would, 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 would be given their way. Nobody would ever have discovered quantum mechanics. It really came from experiments. But now we understand that quantum mechanics works extremely well. The same thing also, gravity theory, uh, 
the experimental observation is of mass and inertia, uh, inertia, uh, inertial mass and gravitational mass are the same thing. That was a marvelous experimental observation, which then led Einstein to find general relativity. Now, all that works ex extremely well, as I said, just, uh, but the amazing thing is that the standard model has, and, and that bears to the question in the way, has lots of analog features in it. First of all, uh, the, the number system we use have always a number system of the real numbers. In very many cases, you use complex numbers. Some people think it's very mysterious why so many complex numbers play a role in physics. I don't think that's mysterious at all. As far as I'm concerned, the complex number is just a pair of real numbers, and that's all there is to it. So there's nothing mysterious about complex numbers, and you can say the same thing about many other system, number systems. But the fact is that the real numbers are very central in the, in the standard model. Also, analog and not discrete computations. And not mean that you, uh, well, you, can, you can make uh, calculations as accurately as you want, but after 12 decimal places, you are no longer able to check experimental theory better than that. So, so you don't know whether the theory works beyond a certain number of decimal places. Um, there are other models like that. Uh, my favorite, more primitive model is a planetary system, Newtonian's theory of gravity acting on the planets. As you know, the first, the first approximation, all planets revolve around the sun in, in beautiful ellipses, but then when you look more carefully, you find planets interact with each other, and the ellipses then are no longer perfect. They, they move around and they change. That's not a true ellipse anymore. They're, they're, those are complicated pirouettes that they, they, they make in nature. But all that can be computed and understood. So the planetary model is a more primitive model of nature, just the model of planets. The planetary model has, uh, in common with the standard model, again, that's based on real numbers. You might think that the whole world is not based on real numbers, well, good for you, but the most, the, the most efficient model to describe planets and the most efficient way to describe standard model is the real numbers. Now, um, at the same time, as I said, neither the planetary system nor the standard model are perfect. We know that they carry their own seeds of destruction. For instance, the planetary model, Newton's planetary model, doesn't say what happens if two planets come too close. We know what happens. They'll both disintegrate something terrible happens, even before they collide. They'll, they'll tear each other apart. And uh, terrible things will happen, which is not in, or in Newton's theory. With gravity, of course, it's much more atomic physics will so start playing a role there. And uh, similar to the standard model, if two particles hit each other with more energy, then we can reproduce any of our machines, things might happen that are not predicted by the standard model. Actually, we know for sure the standard model.